Greetings, and welcome to the Daddy Bruce Randolph 121st birthday celebration. Yes, 121 years. Well, I'm Bishop Jerry Demmer, and I am the president of the Greater Metro Denver Ministerial Alliance. We are excited about having you here with us all today. Listen, this has been going on now for 56 years, and this year makes 57 years that we've been celebrating this great legacy. He started feeding people in 1963. Well, I have a little bit of personal uh, uh, involvement with that. Maybe not involvement, but how about say I was an eyewitness because I am a person that's been here my entire life. Yes, I'm a native. And I used to go down to the restaurant. And some of the things that I witnessed my own self, no matter who you were, no matter wh what color you were, when you, came into daddy, when you came into the restaurant, he fed you. When you came into the restaurant, whether you had finances or not, you did not leave hungry. Well, he carried on that legacy of feeding people on the five points till the day he died. So we're glad you're here with us, and come on and enjoy the celebration. So at this time, we'd like for the Reverend Hollis Booker to come with our invocation. Let us pray. Kind and gracious God, we pause now to, first of all, give you thanks for your son, Jesus, a son whom you loved so much, but yet you even loved the world more or even as much because you sacrificed your son that we might have eternal life. We come today, O oh God, to thank you for the life of Daddy Bruce Randolph, Father, a man who modeled his life after you, a life of service. Father, as he went about this city making a difference, Father, feeding and clothing those who were hungry, a man who always left his light on so that people would know his place was a place of comfort. We ask, O oh God, that as we continue in this program today, that everything that's been said and everything that has already been done Father, will uplift, Father, his name and continue his legacy. We're here today to, to do exactly that. So we just thank you, O oh God, for all that you have done and all that you're going to do as we continue in the life of Daddy Bruce Randolph. And it is in your son Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Hello. I'm Reverend Ronald Wooding. I am the executive director for the uh, Daddy Bruce uh, Legacy Foundation and also the uh, executive director for People's Production Company, LLC. Uh, we're the company that produced the documentary on the life of Daddy Bruce Randolph, Keep a Light in Your Window. And we're excited because in November, Rocky Mountain PBS aired the documentary throughout the month of November and they came back uh, this February and they've aired it twice during this month. So I'm hoping if you didn't see it in, in November and if you haven't seen it in February, you can still see it on their streaming network. That's Rocky Mountain PBS Channel 6. And you can find, uh, uh, look at, um, keep a light in your window and you can see it throughout the day whenever you have time to, do, to stream it. So we're excited today because Daddy Bruce uh, was a legend here in Denver, and now he's being recognized not only in Denver but throughout Colorado and throughout the state and uh, throughout the world because of uh, the streaming of the, the uh, documentary. So we are hoping that you're going to enjoy this day. This is a celebration, and we want to celebrate his 121st birthday. So sit back, enjoy this this evening, and we will be back with you throughout the day. Happy birthday, Daddy Bruce Randolph. We miss you, uh, but through the Daddy Bruce Legacy Foundation, I think uh, we are trying to meet the principles that you kind of set an example for. Uh, the annual feed has been very successful. I'm Bob Coyce from the University of Colorado and American Pathways University, and our students have come down for the last 15 years and volunteered in that food distribution, including this year. And uh, Ronald Wooding has come and been a subject matter expert in our classes and uh, helped us not only with projects related to the annual uh, Thanksgiving distribution, 
but also things like um, a wheelchair accessible ramp being built for one of the nonprofit organizations, um, working with Team Rubicon and Denver Urban Garden, putting in a, Denver, a new urban garden uh, to support folks. And American Pathways University is on a regular basis uh, been involved in actually um, seeing students from that five points neighborhood come and experience at least one or more college classes at a very, very reasonable price. So again, Daddy Bruce, uh, we miss you. Uh, your legacy continues and happy birthday from Bob Coyce. Giving all praise to God, who is my creator, to Jesus Christ, my savior, and to the Holy Spirit, my keeper. Hello, my name is Pastor Frank Jones, and I have the awesome privilege of serving as the head servant or senior pastor of God's Will Christian Fellowship. I have also been blessed to be newly appointed as the assistant director of the Daddy Bruce Randolph Legacy Foundation. Being the assistant director, I have come to have the privilege of serving with this giant, Reverend Ronald Wooding. He has taught me some great valuable lessons. I have learned firsthand that if I wanna be a part of the organization, I'm gonna to have to put in some long hours and some dedicated work. And I thank God that I'm not a stranger to either. Having said that, we need your help. The organization needs your help. Not only are we responsible for the collection of funds that we distribute at the Thanksgiving season in order to put the baskets together, but we also have a job fair that we have annually every May at Bruce Randolph School here in Denver, Colorado. Not only that, but we're also uh, maintaining the cost of keeping a film, a production movie, if you will. The film is called Keep a Light in Your Window. We know that with running any 501c3 organization that there are costs associated with such. And so we come to you tonight asking you for your help. And you may be asking, well, what can I do to help? How can I help? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. The answer is by giving. If you have the heart and the capacity to give, we have a multiplicity of options in order to receive your gifts. If you would like to give through Cash App, please find us at cash tag Daddy Bruce Legacy. If you want to give through Venmo, you can find us at the at sign Daddy Bruce Legacy. If you want to give through PayPal, just log on to PayPal and look for our, the name of our organization, Daddy Bruce Randolph Legacy Foundation. Also, if you want to write a check, we accept checks as well. You can uh, call this number that I'm about to give you in order to get more instructions on your checks. Uh, the number is 720-435-5738, and you'll be able to get instructions on writing your check. As a matter of fact, if you want to give, if you have a heart and compassion to give, to be like Bruce and give as he did, you don't have to wait until this presentation is over. As a matter of fact, you can go right down to uh, the bottom of this web page. And just in case you're not on the web page already, the website address is www.daddybrucelegacy.org. And you can give by clicking on the donation link on the bottom of the page. There will also be links all over our page to help you uh, be able to give your donation. Again, I thank you in advance for your generosity, and I ask that God will bless you tremendously for being a giver, a cheerful giver, like Daddy Bruce. Thank you. Hello, I'm Jackie Weaver Perkins of Denver, Colorado, and I am so honored to have been chosen to sing the theme song for the Daddy Bruce documentary. Put a Light in Your Window was written by Larry Lampell of Denver, Colorado. Now, Larry and Daddy Bruce were very close friends, so he wrote this song during his lifetime. I want you to sit back, be blessed, and enjoy this song, Light in Your Window. Shine your light, shine your light, shine your light, shine it bright. Shine, 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 shine your light, shine your light, shine your light, shine it bright. Shine, shine, shine. Just put a light in your window for the world to see. The world to see. Remember your neighbor. 
I have witnessed many times the greatness of the American spirit. Compassion for others, creativity in meeting challenges, and determination to accomplish our goals are significant attributes of our people. Daddy Bruce was uh, an incredible philanthropist. He was the guy with the biggest heart in the hood and throughout all of Denver. He gave so much of his time and money and energy to people who were less fortunate than he. The program started off very small and then it evolved into something much, much larger, which is today one of the largest events that we hold in the city. I remember a friend of mine coming down to the house and saying, man, there's a little guy up here on Franklin that's giving food away. And I thought to myself, you know, I mean, who's going to be giving food away? He said, no, man, I mean, the whole community is out there. This man is feeding the whole community. Daddy Bruce says, if anything, he has too many volunteers this year, and he knows why. He says, if they volunteer here, they don't have to cook dinner at home. 
very seldom do somebody name a street after you before you die. Just in case you don't mess up again. Take a school like Bruce Randolph in Denver. Three years ago, it was rated one of the worst schools in Colorado. But last May, 97% of the seniors received their diploma. That's what good schools can do. And we want good schools all across the country. Your involvement exemplifies the highest tradition of service to others and enhances the lives of all our citizens. With best wishes for continued success, sincerely, Ronald Reagan. I sat upon that back and looked down at him and boy, he's, he's eating up some food. <laughs> I enjoy that, it's my life. Therefore, I, John W. Hickenlooper, <laughs> governor of the state of Colorado, do hereby officially proclaim November 22nd, 2014, Denver Feed a Family Day. Shine your light, shine your light, shine your light, shine it bright. Shine your light, shine your light, shine your light, shine it bright. Hello everyone, my name is Joyce Randolph and I am the great granddaughter of the late and great Daddy Bruce Randolph. I am so elated to be a part of this great tribute celebration for him and without further ado I would like to sing him a tribute song for his 121 birthday happy birthday to you happy birthday to you Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you, yeah. Happy birthday, Daddy Bruce. Everyone, it's so great to be with you, even if only virtually, to celebrate Daddy Bruce's legacy. What an honor. He impacted so many lives in Denver, across Colorado, and really around the globe. His generosity, all of the time, but especially during Thanksgiving, made sure that people did not go hungry. He wasn't a rich man, but he had a big heart, and he poured it out to everybody he knew and met. I am truly humbled to have an award named after me that celebrates the legacy of Daddy Bruce Randolph and is given to reporters who are making sure this story and other stories in the black community are not overlooked. I am truly honored to present this award to Micah Smith of Denver 7. Micah, you are an amazing, incredible journalist. No wonder you're getting this award. Your voice is so critical as a black woman journalist. It's important for us to tell our story through our lens. Thank you for all the great work you do, Micah, and congratulations. Welcome back this morning. 643 is your time. Denver 7th celebration of Black History Month continues this morning with a story about a Colorado legend. Last week, we shared the story of black pit masters and their contributions to barbecue. And this week, we're introducing you to a man whose barbecue restaurant served as a launching pad to help feed hungry customers and thousands of people in need in Denver. Denver 7's Micah Smith shares the story of Daddy Bruce Randolph. In Denver, his name is everywhere. Daddy Bruce was a legend in his own time. But outside of what's named after him, who is Daddy Bruce Randolph? He opened up. Uh, restaurant on the corner of, at that time it was Gill Pen and 34th. This is what Daddy Bruce did. He gave back to his community. All of that is true, but to understand who Bruce Randolph, aka Daddy Bruce, really is, we have to start two centuries ago in a different state. Daddy Bruce documentarian Reverend Ronald Wooding says Bruce Randolph was born in 1900 in Arkansas. His grandmother was an ex slave. And according to history that she you know, raised him, uh, basically, and of course she gave him her spiritual guidance along with 
her secret recipe for barbecue sauce. He grabbed that recipe and went to live with his son in the Mile High City. He came to Denver in uh, the late um, 50s, well, in his 50s at that time. At the time, Daddy Bruce was in desperate need of a new beginning. He had several failed business ventures, and even though he was past middle age, he decided Denver would be the place where he started over. He wanted to go back to his first love, and that was cooking. Reverend Wooding says Daddy Bruce's barbecue served as a gathering spot, a place to grab a quick bite, and a place to get a free meal for those in need. In his very first year, 63 years old, in 1963, he decided he wanted to be like Jesus and feed 5,000. In his lifetime, he was feeding over 30, 40,000 people just on Thanksgiving. It continued to get so large that, of course, the Broncos came out. Uh, Pat Bolin, the owner of the Broncos, would come out and help out. Which Reverend Wooding says led to Daddy Bruce traveling with the Broncos and feeding them as well. Over the years, Bruce Randolph's reputation for giving back to the community grew larger. To the point that in 1986, they named the street after him, so which was 34th, is now Bruce Randolph Avenue. Daddy Bruce died in 1994. His restaurant closed soon after. But that wasn't the end of the Daddy Bruce story. It was actually the pinnacle. Not only did the Thanksgiving meals keep coming, but in 2010, a school was named in his honor. Bruce Randolph School Principal Melissa Boyd says Daddy Bruce's characteristics are literally spelled out on the school's walls. Our school values, uh, brilliance, respect, unity, character, and effort really exemplify who Daddy Bruce was. With Reverend Wooding's help, the school also is creating a Daddy Bruce photo gallery in the cafeteria after only having one picture of the legend for years. They wanted to do something creative with Bruce Randolph. Each caption will hold a piece of Daddy Bruce's life giving the next generation the full story of a man who started life over in his 50s, used his passion for cooking to feed thousands, and whose name can be found throughout Denver. Reporting in Denver, Micah Smith, Denver When I first found out that I was receiving this award, I immediately thought, wow, what an incredible honor. To be recognized by the foundation and the community in this way means so much to me. When I moved to Denver a little over two years ago now, I remember immediately seeing the name Bruce Randolph everywhere. And my news director asked me, do you know who that is? And I said, vaguely, well, she said, you should do a story and find out exactly who that is. And, and through my storytelling, I did find out exactly who Daddy Bruce is. He was an amazing man who put so many people before himself. Uh, I remember hearing that he set out to feed 5,000 people, and we know that he's fed so many more people than that. Uh, just even, even employing people in his restaurant, teaching them skills so that they could go out and, and, and feed themselves. He was just an incredible person. And so to receive this award from the community, from the foundation, it's hard to put into words what that feels like, but I can tell you that in my heart, it is one of the biggest honors I've ever received. And I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. back and I just want to share with you uh, what the B. Bruce Awards stand for. I want to uh, just give you the uh, uh, meaning of the acronyms B. Bruce. First of all, the B stands for brilliance. The R stands for respect. U stands for unity. C stands for character. And E, excellence. Well, I think you'll agree with me when we start talking about who Daddy Bruce was, that the B. Bruce description fits him. And so the people that are going to be recipients of this award upon today, they have been picked because they are the people that display these type of characteristics. So we're ready to go to our recipients upon today. Dr. Janice Mackey created an organization entitled Young Aspiring Americans for Social and Political Activism, better known as YASPA. YASPA endeavors to build the self-efficacy of youth to reclaim academic, civic, and career spaces through race-conscious leadership and transformative 
organizations. She earned her PhD in higher education with a public policy and curriculum and instruction emphasis at the University of Denver. It is with great honor that the Daddy Bruce Foundation presents the B. Bruce Award to Dr. Janice Mackey. Hi, my name is Dr. Janice Mackey, and I'm the co-founder and executive director of Young Aspiring Americans for Social and Political Activism, or YASPA for short. This year, we celebrate 11 years of partnering with Black, Brown, Indigenous students of color to reclaim academic career and civic spaces. The school in honor of Daddy, Bruce Randolph, was named in his honor in 2010, which is the same year that my organization, YASPA, was conceived. To receive the Daddy Bruce Randolph Legacy Foundation Award is an honor that runs deep in my soul because of the ancestor and elder wisdom that comes from it. My parents, Clifton and Janelle Grant, grew up in Park Hill in Five Points and were well aware of his legacy and the ways in which he engaged in community to ensure folks were fed and had what they needed. So this is very significant to have this opportunity to be honored Thank you, Reverend Wooding, for all you have done to speak to our youth about his legacy and for attributing the award to YASPA's Centering Community Wellness and Resilience Program, in which we provide one-on-one -on -one coaching, collaborative healing sessions, as well as food, specifically from Black, Brown, Indigenous vendors of color and restaurants of color in order to engage in cooperative economics and community. Thank you for keeping the legacy of Daddy Bruce Randolph alive and allowing me to be a part of that vision. Much love. Hello, I'm Dr. Tawana Jones, the spiritual advisor with the Daddy Bruce Randolph Legacy Foundation. I have the honor of giving the B. Bruce Award to Chef Lisa Gibbons. She is the executive personal chef with Gourmet Away. She loves to cook food for people who cannot cook or will not cook for themselves. And in 2018, she was named the Personal Chef of the Year Award by the United States Personal Chef Association. And when she's not cooking, she's mentoring, she's working in her community, she's volunteering, and she's doing things to help enhance her family life. She has been a member of the United States Personal Chef Association for over 15 years, a life member of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority, and a dedicated member of For His Glory's Ministries for over 17 years. This gives me great honor to present this year's B. Bruce Award to Chef Lisa Givens. Thank you for all of your hard work and congratulations. Hi, I'm Chef Lisa Givens, and I would like to thank the Daddy Bruce Randolph Legacy Foundation for recognizing my service, and I humbly accept this B. Bruce Award. As a personal chef, I am inspired by Daddy Bruce Randolph and all of his giving to the less fortunate, as well as him setting the tone for how organizations should give today. Nourishment of the homeless, the sick, the shut-in, and the caregivers are my way, my small way of giving back. So thank you so much. This year's award is going to Councilwoman Candy C. DeBaca. Well, let me tell you a little bit about her. First of all, Candy is a proud fifth generation of the Northeast Denver. In Colorado, she lived in the very same home uh, in Swansea that her great-grandmother lived in, watch this, 80 years ago. She was raised by a single mother and grandparents. Candy understands the importance of a tight-knit community. Candy is a proud graduate of Manuel High School, where she was valedictorian and class president. It is with great honor that the Daddy Bruce Foundation presents the B. Bruce Award to Councilwoman Candy C. DeBaca. Hi, my name is Candy C. DeBaca, and I'm the Denver City Councilwoman for District 9. 
I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the Daddy Bruce Legacy Foundation, specifically Reverend Ronald Wooding, for this incredible honor and for your tireless work to keep Daddy Bruce's legacy alive. I was fortunate enough to learn about Daddy Bruce as a teenager working right up the street at an after school program at Cole Middle School. It was one of my first community service events and very quickly became something that I've committed to participating in every single year. Um, not only did I participate in my youth, but our family was originally one of a, the recipients of the Daddy Bruce Thanksgiving dinners. Um, now, as the councilwoman for District 9, I have the great honor of carrying on um, the legacy through ensuring that this event happens every year and ensuring that it has the funds needed in order for it to keep going. It's my favorite tradition, um, and Daddy Bruce is one of my favorite Colorado slash Denver leaders. He embodied all that it means to be a servant leader and he took care of his community. And I hope to be half the human he was in my own efforts to love and care for my community. Thank you again to everyone involved in recognizing me for this incredible award. It means so much to me and I truly, truly am grateful from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. I'm very excited today to be chosen to uh, to make this award to this particular recipient, uh, and, and we say recipient, but it's actually all the Kaiser uh, frontline workers and the uh, oncology and hematology department, because we watched and saw how how much effort they put out during the COVID-19 uh, this, this pandemic and how hard they worked to make sure all their patients were taken care of. So we were, um, in, in, in choosing uh, different recipients, we chose uh, this particular hospital because of our connections with them and because of my connections with uh, uh, my doctor, Dr. Uh, Benjamin Shiler, who's accepting the award for the uh, uh, Kaiser frontline workers in the oncology and hematology department. So again, we thank them for all their efforts that they put out during this pandemic and that they're still putting out. But we want the city to know and everyone to know what a great job they did during this time. Hello, my name is Dr. Ben Shire. I'm an oncologist with Kaiser. I want to thank the Daddy Bruce Randolph Legacy Foundation for this incredible honor. And on behalf of all Kaiser Permanente frontline workers, I want to accept this tremendous honor uh, this has been a, a trying year, certainly for the entire community of Denver, but certainly in the healthcare field. And I do think of the Daddy Bruce Randolph legacy uh, with, with the sacrifice we're making here. You know, we, we, we put in tireless hours, try our best to really help the community, boost our health, make things equitable, fair, and keep our community moving towards success, happiness, and the Daddy Bruce legacy speaks to that. His philanthropic efforts in the communities here in Denver are very meaningful, and I find inspiration in them. So it's a, even more special of an honor for me to receive this. Uh, we are hopefully coming around the corner here with the pandemic, but we must remain vigilant, and we will keep working hard for the community in, in Daddy Bruce Randolph's memory. So thank you again. And uh, I look forward to hopefully celebrating more of these type of events in person in the future. Senator James Coleman was born and raised in Park Hill neighborhood of Denver and currently lives in Denver's Green Valley Ranch neighborhood. He represents Senate District 33 in Northeast Denver. When he was elected to his first term in 2016, Senator Coleman was the youngest uh, uh, Colorado state legislator. He also was recently elected to the Senate uh, position. He, he's involved with student athletes. He works with businesses across this metropolitan uh, area. He is a part of COVID-19. 
pandemic support. And he works to make sure that everybody is being treated justly when it comes to vaccinations. He's a family man. He, when he's not in the Capitol, uh, uh, Senator Coleman served as the, the executive director of Faith Bridge Colorado, a local nonprofit uh, mobilizing faith communities to improve K through 12 education in the state of Colorado. His passion for faith-based community service began when he was licensed and ordained as a minister at the tender age of 13. He began to preach in different churches across this community. Well, it is our honor. It is with great privilege and great pleasure that the Danny Bruce Foundation presents to Senator James Coleman the B. Bruce Award. Hello, my name is James Coleman. I'm your state senator for Colorado Senate District 33, representing Northeast Denver from 56th Avenue south to Colfax and from the Denver International Airport west to Five Points, or in this case, the home of Daddy Bruce's legacy. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Reverend Ronald Wooding, Pastor Frank Jones, and the Daddy Bruce Randolph Legacy Foundation for awarding me the B. Bruce Award for modeling the characteristics lived out by Daddy Bruce Randolph himself. B for brilliance, R for respect, U for unity, C for character, and E for excellence. To receive such an award is an honor. Daddy Bruce Randolph made an impact in the city of Denver, the state of Colorado, and the United States of America, and that he lived what I like to call the Matthew 25 life. In that passage, we hear the words, for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when do we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. You see, by serving people as if he was serving God himself, Daddy Bruce showed us how to treat one another with respect, love, and compassion. Thank you, Daddy Bruce, for feeding a boy who would one day become a state senator. And thank you for feeding the soul of a city, a state, and a nation. Again, thank you all for this award. Well, this has been an exciting evening. Uh, you know, this whole event, the Daddy Bruce birthday celebration, 121st birthday celebration. Um, as we said, Daddy Bruce was born in 1900, uh, past 1994. Here we are, you know, all these years later, still celebrating and being able to uh, share with the community. And as I said, with the film, Dad, keep a light in your window. We're sharing it not only um, locally, but around the world. People will be, be able to watch the documentary. So we, we're excited about that, and we're excited about all the different things that we do through the Daddy Bruce Legacy Foundation. And um, of course, one of the things this past year, we were excited because we partnered with several corporations and uh, was able to um, raise um, uh, $50,000 to help with the uh, Thanksgiving, uh, Dad Bruce uh, Thanksgiving uh, food distribution. And of course, that, you know, you look at it and you say, well, 50000 you know, they don't really need any money. But all of this went toward the uh, Thanksgiving distribution at that time. And we do other things, like say, throughout the year. And of course, we just, we just want everyone to know that we are year-round because uh, this event, the birthday celebration, and then in May, we will have our job fair is held at Bruce Randolph School. Uh, and if we can't have it there this year due to the COVID, uh, then we'll have another virtual event. But this is when we have employers who come in and that um, uh, join with us on, on, and we bring in individuals that are looking for employment and they match uh, uh, their their um, companies with these people and, and they can get a job you know, immediately right there on the spot. 
So we have other events, of course, you know, just regular expenses. And there's a 501c3. There are always, you know, expenses for things that we do. But we have uh, various ways that you can help us out. And that is by donating to the Data Bruce Legacy Foundation. And you can either give through PayPal, um, the Data Bruce Randolph Legacy Foundation's uh, cash, we'll call it cash app. And uh, it's called Cash Tag, uh, Daddy Bruce Legacy, uh, through Venmo, uh, which is at Daddy Bruce Legacy. Or you can just go on our web page and uh, make a donation there. Or you can uh, give us a call at 720-435-5738 and uh, make a donation uh, just by writing a check. But we need your help. And this is something that we want to continue 20 years from now to still be talking about. Daddy Bruce Randolph, and uh, of course, as we end the night, again, we're thanking everyone who watched uh, the uh, celebration tonight, all those who participated, and we look forward to uh, our next event with you. So as we close, we just want to thank you, thank you, thank you.